Friends, from wherever you may be watching this, a very warm welcome to all of you from glorious Olewis Parish Church in Staffordshire, England. We're here as part of the uh, May edition of the online digital parish magazine, and today thinking about the value of heritage. More and more people are excited about their own family heritage. They're busy investigating their family tree, wanting to know who's who and where they came from. And many times, of course, people will be coming to places like historic churchyards in order to track down their relatives. We're in a beautiful, ancient, medieval building here of All Saints Parish Church in Olewis. And with me, we have Peter Raleigh, who's playing a really important part, an exciting new project, helping to open up our history and its interpretation to everyone. And I really want Pete to have an opportunity now to share more about the work you're doing for us all. Peter. Okay, thank you. Uh, the project we're doing is entitled All Saints Church, the Heart of the Community. And the reason it's called that is because going back 2,000 years, uh, where we are now, was probably the resting place of travellers as they waited for the floods to diminish. And it's on the crossroads of two very important trade routes. So the likelihood is that uh, people rested here and where people gather, they want somewhere to worship, probably a rude cross was built, uh, which gradually became a building and then eventually became the church that we see now. Um, and so that's the, the essence of the project. It's split into two distinct parts. The first part I see is the, the learning, the interpretation. Um, and it's very much a part of the um, HLF ethos, because it's funded by HLF, and we're very grateful for that, uh, that heritage must be um, preserved, but it also must be passed on, and it must be a benefit to the community and to the individual. So the, the first part of the project is about learning. Mm -hmm. It's about getting any visitor who comes, whether they're casual visitor, members of the community, to understand more about the church as a building, as well as a place of worship. And how will we do that, Peter? What okay, the there'll be se there's several strands. There'll be a new um, guidebook, which will be more detailed um, than has ever been before. There'll be a family trail, so that families can mm. explore the church together. Because one of the big issues is getting people actually to look around the church, rather than just walk in, have a look around, and then go back out again. So we need to keep them here. There'll also be um, a series of films, short films, that visitors can pick up on their smartphones, which is a sort of augmented reality. Um, if you're in the church now, you'll see the font, but there's nothing happening there. We have a bell tower, but we can't hear the bells. Very few people have ever seen bells actually mm -hmm. swinging round or seen them being rung. So there'll be films to explain how the bells work, how they're rung, how they get up to the starting position, hopefully get inside the organ and Chris can tell us how that works, perhaps see um, a, a christening as it actually happens, and just give a, people an idea of the church as a living place rather than a, an empty place they may see. Um, we've also got a very good volunteer team who are developing a series of resources for the local school. Excellent. Um, so we're working very close with All Saints Primary School uh, to get them involved with developing those. Um, we'll be developing the website. There is also um, at the churchyard uh, part of the, the project, which I'll talk about, but the website will be enhanced and expanded. So the first part is about learning, it's the interpretation. And interpretation is telling people the stories behind the church uh, and what the building is about. The, the second part is the graveyard survey. Looking around now at the churchyard, it's diff difficult to believe that in 1970s there were a thousand or so graves out there. Mm. Um, it was becoming difficult to manage in terms of being able to mow or cut around the graves. So in the mid-70s, a lot of the gravestones, the majority of them were moved and placed around the perimeter. Mm. Not all of them, unfortunately, I don't think. But before that happened, they were all mapped and um, the inscriptions were written down. So we're now transferring those mm. inscriptions to a database, but we're doing a little bit more than that. We've got all the parish records going back to 1560, and all of those are being transferred onto a database as well, in addition to replotting the graveyard as it is now. So all the new graves since 1975, everything will be plotted. So what you were saying about people coming to search for relatives mm. um, and, or people they may know from their own past, 
uh, hopefully, well, no, definitely, it'll be there for them to search. Which will be brilliant. It'll be excellent. Really looking forward to getting that done. Well, we're so excited about the project, but we're only perhaps just one bit of it because we're along a, a particular kind of pilgrim pathway. Can you just finish by telling us I more will. about the bigger vision? Yeah. Um, in addition to this project at All Saints, I'm doing a similar project at St. James in Barton. And when I was looking at the map, it occurred to me that from Litchfield Cathedral up to Tayton Hill is a pretty well straight line. And there's still a path that joins all of those churches. And um, Norman Studd referred to it in his book uh, from the 80s as Pilgrim Way. Mm -hmm. I can't find any other, re any other record of that. However, um, I'm hoping that in, in coming years we can develop a trail from Litchfield Cathedral to uh, Tayton Hill Church so that visitors can either walk or drive and visit those churches along the way. And they're all very different churches. Got some beautiful big parish churches like this and then tiny ones like St. Leonard's of Wichita. And I think it'll be a fantastic uh, trail uh, if we can get that going. And just to finish by saying that we rely heavily on volunteers. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's involved professionally or on a volunteer basis is from the village. We've got a lot of people uh, working with us, but there's room for people to help. Um, they don't have to give an awful lot of time. They can give as little or as much time as they wish. And how can they let you know? They can, um, if they search for the All Saints, um, it's All Saints Church HLF website, or look around the village, there'll be posters like this one, or contact John, or contact me, or my wife Paula, some of you in the village will know. Um, I guess we can put a link in the, in the magazine as well. That oh, people of course can we follow. Can. So just contact me and you won't be refused. Well, Peter, we look forward to its completion, which we think will be in the autumn of 2018. Yes. There's a lot to look forward to, a lot to enjoy, and we hope you'll all come wherever you might be watching this from to come and learn more about the heritage of Oruis and your part in it. Thank you, goodbye, and thank you, Peter, for your sharing. Thank you very much.